Hey, how are you doing? So welcome to a brand new video. Hold on, this is not a brand new video only, it's a brand new series. So in this series, we are going to talk about a lot of JavaScript synchronous and asynchronous programming. What is so special about it? If you ask anyone, what is that one topic from JavaScript that they are really worried and concerned about? You will find the answer as promises. Asynchronous programming. So in this series, we are going to demystify a lot of it. In this video, we completely focus on understanding why JavaScript is synchronous, at the same time how the asynchronousness happens. We will also th talk about uh, things like how function gets executed in sequence, what makes JavaScript asynchronous, where exactly promises come into picture. We won't be getting too much deep into promises itself in this video. Therefore, that there will be subsequent video in this series. But this one is going to set the stage. My main motive and intention of this series is if you are a beginner to JavaScript and if you have you know, some issues in understanding promises or dealing with it, at the end of this series, uh, you should be able to say that you understand promises. You will be able to solve problems quite easily. And the plan here is that towards the end of the series, we are going to solve a lot of problems hands on. So it means that whatever we are learning throughout, we'll be able to encash that towards the end of it. So I wish you all the best to learn along with me and I hope you enjoy this experience thoroughly. Now to get started, before we, before we get started, I just want to call out like, um, if you like this series or this video, please uh, share this because this might going to benefit many other people. Please subscribe to this channel so that you get notification on the future videos. Okay, so let's get started. As I mentioned, this is going to be about synchronous versus asynchronous. So uh, let me start with a very simple question to all of you. What is JavaScript? And if you have to give answers for, for this, I'm sure that you know there will be a bunch of answers that you can come up with. Um, maybe the one that will be more confusing but kind of correct, correct is this. Like it's a single threaded, non-blocking, asynchronous, concurrent programming language with lots of flexibilities. Now, if this answer is given to anybody, I'm sure the reaction is going to be like this. It is asynchronous. We are also saying this is single threaded, but hold on. Single threaded and asynchronous at the same time? Doesn't single threaded mostly mean synchronous? Then how come JavaScript is asynchronous, right? That question of course come into our mind. Now to do that, to understand this particular thing, what we'll do first, we'll first understand what synchronous means in JavaScript, right? And then we are going to talk about what exactly asynchronousness is in JavaScript. Now, when you write code in JavaScript, you write the code in each line. So the left side of it, whatever you see is like each line of code that you continue to write. Now you can actually keep writing code only line by line, line by line, you know, bunch of lines in the code. And what JavaScript will do, JavaScript engine will come into picture and is going to execute e each line at a time, line by line, synchronously, top down, right? That's something that we all need to understand. And that makes JavaScript actually synchronous. That makes JavaScript sequential. But in uh, real life programming, what you need to keep in mind is like, um, JavaScript has something called functions. And functions are the first type, you know, first class citizen in JavaScript. What does it mean? It means like you can create a function, you can modify a function, you can use a function as an argument of another function, you can return a function from one function, you can actually assign a function to a variable. So basically, what and all in a programming language is possible, you can do most of it with functions. So all these abilities allow us to use function instead of just lines of code placed logically within a function body and use it. So that's what this diagram is basically saying that instead of just doing line by line, let's logically group them, have it in the function so that we also have a bunch of reusabilities over here, right? So the next thing is 
how do you declare a function and how do you basically invoke a function when you do like function function name f1 and you have a bunch of lines over here this is what how you declare you have defined a function and if you want to just invoke this function you call this function call f1 somewhere down the line so that means whenever that particular line of execution come for javascript what it is going to do it is going to invoke that particular function right as simple as that so whenever a function executes in javascript whenever things execute that basically the execution takes place a function execution take place one very vital thing one very important thing that you need to keep in mind uh, javascript engine maintains a stack data structure what a stack data structure is it's a very simple data structure where you can push the things and the more you push the things it goes at the bottom and when you basically take out the thing you take out from the top right so whatever gets in first it comes out last and that is what the normal stack data structure is so javascript engine maintains a stack data structure it's called function execution stack the purpose of the function execution stack is just to track the current function that is being executed the current function is execution so if you have f11 function and you just invoke this function so f1 gets into the stack gets executed come out of the stack right so let's take a scenario where you have a function like f1 and the function f1 call another function f2 inside it so how does this stack is going to work so javascript engine when it invokes a function it adds it to the stack for example it adds it to the stack in the execution starts and if the currently executed function call another function the engine adds the second function to the stack and again start the execution once the execution of the second function gets over the engine takes it out from the stack and the control goes back to the first function again once the first function's execution is over again function first function goes out of the stack right and it keeps continuing the same way until we find the stack is empty this function execution stack is also known as call stack you know we also call it as call stack now i know that i have i have told lot of theory and um, you know you probably get confused like you know i'm telling about getting inside the stack bringing out of the stack lot of stuff over here so what we'll do is like we will do some live coding now and we will understand like how this functions really get inside the stack how it comes out of the stack what is the sequence so we'll do we'll take a couple of examples a simple one a bit complex one and see how things happen all right so as usual i have my visual studio code open and let me write some simple functions so let's go ahead and write a function f1 yeah in probably uh, a real case you won't name a function like that f1 and let's prefer that it has some code maybe a console.log f1 so prefer that it has some some code over here similarly what we'll do is like let's define three functions like this one is f1 another is f2 another is f3 and let's quickly change their names we have f2 and then we have f3 so this is where i have defined the function and each of the function may have some code it may do summation of two things it may do multiplication of things or you know such such things it can do now what we'll do the next thing is we'll be invoking this function invoke the functions right so what we'll do is first is we'll invoke f1 and let's do invocation of f2 and of course after that we can do the invocations of f3 right so f1 f2 f3 you have invoked now there is nothing no console.log nothing is there so nothing on print but this is what exactly this happened so what do you what do you anticipate to happen uh, in this case in if you think from the call stack mechanism perspective so let's see with an interactive diagram so here an interactive diagram first we have similar kind of functions over here and f1 gets invoked f1 gets into the stack great f1 executes comes out of the stack f2 invokes f2 gets into the stack f2 comes out of the stack then f3 gets invoked f3 goes inside the stack and f3 comes out of the stack so you see whenever the execution happen the function gets into inside the stack execution gets over and it comes out you know outside of the stack it is kind of looping here again just to tell that f1 goes come out f2 executes 
f2 goes come out f3 executes f3 goes and will come out right so i hope that a simple case a function execution makes sense over here now let us do one thing let us take a little bit of complex case right we will take a little bit of complex case in, instead of doing this f1 f2 f3 simple f2 f1 f2 f3 we'll change this structure a little bit right what we'll be doing in from the f3 function we'll be calling say f2 okay so let's call f2 from f3 from f2 let us call f1 invoke and we just invoke f3 at the end so let's see what are the changes we have done we have a function f1 f2 f3 f3 invokes f2 f2 invokes f1 f1 has some code and finally once what we do we invoke a f3 so what exactly we think will change now in our you know function execution stack so let us see again with our interactive diagram and then we can see like what kind of uh, changes we have seen in this case all right so pay attention here first f3 gets invoked right f3 gets invoked f3 gets inside the stack now f3 doesn't come out of the stack because it executes another function f2 f2 gets inside the stack f2 executes another function f1 f1 gets inside the stack f1's execution over comes out of the stack now f2's execution over comes out of the stack f3's execution over comes out of the stack right it's a bit different right it is like calling one by one let's see once again first if f3 we invoke f3 gets inside the stack it has another function f2 that is invoked so f2 goes inside the stack f2 has few code and it invokes another function f1 gets inside the stack f1 finish executions come out f2 finishes execution come out f3 finishes execution come out so this is quite great right i mean we have seen like you know how this complete execution takes place inside the function execution stack irrespective of whatever way you invoke invoke your functions your call your, you know you are calling one function from another function or you're invoking the function serially in every cases the function execution stack or the call stack come into place now here we have to identify your very very specific thing everything that happens in this function execution stack everything each and everything happen in this function execution stack is sequential it's synchronous so the bottom line is everything that happens inside function execution stack is sequential which is the synchronous part of the javascript javascript's main thread make sure of taking care of everything inside the function execution stack before it starts looking into anything else right i'll repeat this bottom line again because this is very important for you to understand the bottom line is everything that happens inside function execution stack is sequential this is the synchronous part of the javascript javascript's main thread the single threaded main thread make sure to take care of everything inside the function execution stack before it starts looking into elsewhere what exactly elsewhere means that's what we'll see in the asynchronous part of the javascript so i hope the synchronous part is quite clear it's all about the execution inside the function execution stack now quickly we'll talk about let's move over to asynchronous programming of javascript so what does the word asynchronous means the word asynchronous means only means is like you know it's not occurring at the same time right occurring at the same time that's what the, as the asynchronous means if it is happening at the same time sequentially it's asynchronous but what does it mean in the context of uh, javascript right so in the we have seen the sequential execution that works excellent we have seen that however you may want to fetch data from a data store or a server sometime or you might want to you know execute certain functions with some delay so two use cases we spoke about so one use case of course let's just comment this so that we don't lose this yeah um, one use case is of course uh, you want to fetch data from server that is one use case the second use case uh, want to execute something with a delay let's take one another uh, related use cases like want to execute 
something after an event right so there are various things that we can actually th think about so in these three cases in majority of these three cases we have something where things may not happen at the same time it may not ha occur same time so that is where the code has to uh, execute asynchronously so in these circumstances you want you may want javascript engine to uh, execute things asynchronously because otherwise your synchronous execution itself will be stopped it will halt and that will really not going to be a very great experience for your end users so think about it like a function execution is going on but in between there is a server call but the function execution get halted just because there is a you know server call and until the server call happens your everything is completely frozen nobody is able to perform any operations on your application that's going to be really really bad right now next important thing that we need to keep in mind is like in javascript the asynchronous operations can be triggered only with two things majority of the asynchronous operations one is with browser apis browser apis it's also called say web apis kind of same thing what are the browser apis or web apis like uh, functions like set timeout you know what exactly set timeout is you can actually execute a function with some delay set interval you are executing a fun function in the interval or any other handler methods for example a click handler a mouse over or many more handlers that that you know javascript provides so all these browser apis or the web apis um, they they are the trigger for asynchronous operations in javascript it means whenever these functions trigger something things may not happen immediately it probably because of the fact that it 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 will happen with a delay the second thing the second part of it that can trigger an asynchronous function it's called promises so promises is a unique javascript object that allow you to make asynchronous operations don't worry if you are new to promises and um, you know you really don't need much of promise uh, concept to follow this particular video the subsequent video in this series is going to go in depth of promises to make you understand like how it works and what with a lot of real life examples right so these two things now let's talk about um, the first case that like browser apis or web apis how how these things happen you know let's take an example so let me take an example of say function let's define a function called print me what exactly this function does it probably does a console dot log of say print me and we have a very simple function over here now we won't be calling print me over here instead of that what we'll be doing is like we'll be calling set timeout over here so set timeout takes a function and then takes a delay delay in milliseconds so what will happen in, if we pass the set timeout in uh, you know the print me into set timeout it will execute print me with a delay of 2 seconds so if i save this and try to see in the console after 2 seconds we should see that print me um, gets executed yeah so i saw after a delay of 2 seconds print me got executed so uh, you saw like you know there is always a de delay in this case now let's improvise a little bit uh, on this particular uh, code let us add one more function say called test and we will do a simple console dot log of test okay so we did a test and then what we'll be doing we'll call this test now if you are watching this video can you think of what is going to be the output if i run this is it going to be print me and then followed by test or it will be test followed by print me let's see i have run this so it should execute um, right now so what we see here first test gets printed and then print me get printed so why it is not first print me and then test because we are calling print me over here is it because that we are giving this delay of Two seconds okay let's do one thing let's not give any delay let's give a zero seconds delay over here and then let's run this one second and let's see what happens interesting we see test and print me again so print me still didn't 
get executed before test that is where the asynchronous programming of javascript kicks in it doesn't matter whether you have given a delay of 2 minutes 2 seconds 2 hour or no delay at all javascript engine will see set time out in picture it knows that it's a browser apis it has to handle it asynchronously it will keep it aside keep executing all other regular functions synchronously then try to bring in this set time out and get going to execute this so i hope this is quite clear if not we are going to see again with some interactive diagram right away have a look into the picture here so we have seen call stack already where the function gets and is gets executed sequentially we, i have introduced three more things in this picture one is something called a browser api is one box and then there is another box it's called callback queue or task queue and then the third thing that i have executed over here is you know something like you know something is looping right these three things now it is important for us to take some time and understand these three uh, things along with the concept of call stack so, so that we kind of understand and appreciate how um, the entire things work you know um, in the uh, asynchronous programming right so what happened when javascript engine whenever it's keep executing things line by line we know that it's keep executing things line by line so whenever it sees a, a regular function like this it will put into the call stack and it is going to execute this in the call stack but it if it happens to see um, that there is a browser api it's like set type out what it does is basically it does is not going to put the set time out function straight away into the call stack the set time out or any other web apis or uh, event handler uses a function as a callback function this print me is a callback function what it means it means it calls this particular function only when a particular only when the functionality of this set time out itself is done the functionality of set time out is execute something after a delay of certain time so whenever a delay of certain time done it is going to call this function if you click on a button like on a click handler you pass a function like once you click on a button what exactly uh, you you want to do that you pass in a function that is also a callback function so all these callback functions is not going to get put into call stack directly instead of that it is going to put into a queue as new data structure now we had a stack now we have queue a queue so queue is a data structure where you can actually keep putting things and whatever you do a first in that will go out uh, of the queue first so it's a first in first out data structure so it gets into the queue and then engine javascript engine creates a loop this is the loop that i was talking about um, to look into this queue periodically to find what's need to pull from this queue it pulls a callback function from the queue to the call stack only when it finds this stack is empty now the callback function like a regular function is in the stack it gets executed and again the loop continues right so the what 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 is the moral of the story when a browser api occurs like a set time out when a browser api occurs a browser api comes like a set time out uh, it park the callback function like this print me into this callback queue keep executing the code as usual so it will come to test test goes into the call stack gets executed once the text is done the call stack is empty there is a loop that javascript engine created it's called event loop this particular loop looks into this callback queue and see like hey do i have anything in the callback queue yeah i have print me and is the call stack empty yes it is empty because test is done let's pull this guy from the callback queue to the call stack and execute and it's continue the loop so this is how the thing happen basically now what we'll be doing we'll be writing um one more uh, code using some uh, you know synchronous function execution and asynchronous function execution with set timeout and we are going to see what exactly happening in this case in the interactive way right let's do that all right so let's write this code let's uh, take few functions first and then we'll have a set timeout so function f1 and let's put a simple console.log of f1 
fine and similarly we'll take one more function let's say f2 we'll do a console.log of f2 and then we'll take a function name it as main maybe okay so few things that main function will do what it will do it will first do a console dot log of main okay then i will do a set timeout of f1 and let's give a zero delay right because we know what's going to happen in delay but let's see if there's zero delay and then finally let me call the function f2 and at the end of it let's call let's invoke the main itself right so let's see the code once more i have a function f1 simple function print a logs print a log f2 print a log i have main uh, console.log main and i have a set timeout where it executes this f1 with zero delay then i'm calling f2 as usual and at the finally i'm invoking main so what's the output? What's the expected output in this case? What do you think that output is going to be? Is it going to be main f1, f2, or it is going to be main f2, f1, or f1, f2, main, what exactly do you expect, right? So see here, first main gets invoked, right? Main gets into the call stack. After main gets into the call stack, um, what happened is like it sees a set timeout. So it sees a browser API, isolate this callback into the callback queue, continue to execute the next line, then F2 gets into the call stack, finish F2's execution, so main and F2 done. Then there's nothing else to execute, call stack is empty. So what, this, what it does, it looks into the call, the event loop will look into the callback queue, it finds F1, brings it into the call stack, execute and the execution over. That's why main F2 and F1 we see. Now see it in a diagram so that things uh, things will be more clear. All right, first main comes inside because we invoke main. Main has a console dot log console dot uh, sorry main gets over. Now set timeout comes into picture. It recognizes it's a web API. It has a callback f1. The callback comes here. It's not placed in the call stack yet. Then f2 f2 has a console dot log f2 gets executed. So console.log f2 gone, then f2 gone, then main gone, call stack is free, even loop pulls from callback queue to call stack. f1 has a console.log f1, console.log gets clear, then f1 gets clear. So I hope that this is uh, understood. Let's let's do this once again. First main gets executed, so main come here. Now main has a console.log main, that is a function comes here, gets executed. Set timeout comes next. It's a web API. The callback gets placed here, not in here. Now F2 gets executed. F2 has a console.log F2. Done. F2 goes out. Nothing else is here. A main goes out. From callback queue, it goes to call stack. It executes as usual. F1 comes here, console.log, and then F1 goes, the execution over. So this is the reason. If you see, first main, we get a print of main. Then we get the print of F2 because the callback of set timeout F1 is waiting in the callback queue until event loop finds out the call stack is empty and it's time to pull F1 from callback queue to callback stack. This is the asynchronousness in JavaScript, my friends. So sequential things in call stack keep executing sequentially. The things which are asynchronous is waiting in the callback queue and event loop looks into the, the things that when the call stack is empty look into the callback queue and then bring in if there are more than one item in the callback queue what if there are two set timeout here both call both the callbacks of set timeout will reside here whatever you know enter the queue first that will get the opportunity to go to the stack executes and then in the next one will go right so is that all about asynchronousness no we told there are two triggers right one is browser api web api and the third one is promises so now in the next example, we are going to see with promises and with browser API and with sequential functions and see how everything works together for the JavaScript synchronousness and asynchronousness. Have a look. So what are promises? 
uh, we kind of touch base a little in the beginning like in javascript promises are the special objects that help in asynchronous operation um, again we won't be touching too much about promises here in this video for that there is a subsequent videos but let's try to understand like how we create promises and what happened we create promises using the promise constructor so how do we create the new operator and then the promise constructor over here what this constructor takes it takes a function that function is called an executor function so function is like function resolve and reject this function resolve and reject this uh, this executor function takes two parameters one is like resolve another is reject now this resolve and reject are given to you by javascript you don't have to really worry about anything about it right so uh, you create it using this promise constructor the promise constructor takes a function as an argument that function is called executor function we define what's to do inside this execution executor function when the asynchronous operation completes so when the asynchronous operation completes what exactly to be done we define that in the executor function so it means when the asynchronous operation is complete whether we are going to resolve it saying that we got a result we let somebody know that we got a result or we reject it saying that there is an error that's what it does so if we have to resolve for example a resolve case is like resolve let's resolve saying that you know i am a resolved promise right so that's what it is now okay fine i have created a promise i have resolved a promise but how would how is it going to be helpful who is going to use it so in promise there are two parties always one is the executor this is this function and another is the consumer it means that when the execution is done somebody has to be notified so how that somebody has to be notified somebody has to be notified using you know three important handler methods that promise provides one is then another is catch and the third one is finally we will get a lot of details about these things in the in the future videos but for now just remember this much so let's see once quickly that how these things work so we'll do a const promise equals to promise we'll get it in a variable and then next what we can do basically we can do like promise this particular variable then you know if i get a result in that case what i'll be doing is i'll be printing this result console.log of result right i have used, i have used an arrow function here you can use a regular function also here not a problem at all so um, if i write a uh, line like this it means that whenever this promise gets resolved or you know um, what i'm expecting here is like i'm expecting is like I'm expecting this result like I am a result promise to come over here, right? So this is what the promise is doing. Now, whenever there is a promise, there is one more thing that gets introduced into a diagram. In the diagram, we have seen that there is a call stack, there is a callback queue, there is a, a trigger or a recognition of a browser APIs, and there is an event loop. We have seen that in our diagram, you know? But if there is a promise in the code and JavaScript engine encounters a promise, it you know uses something called job queue so let's see a job queue in our diagram first and then we'll see like how it is different from the callback queue so this is a this is a new diagram we have a call stack in the call stack things execute as it is we have seen this particular place where you know engine recognize what is the browser apis we have seen the callback queue like for each of these browser apis or the web apis there is a callback function that get placed in the queue now there is something called job queue right which is also called micro task so whenever there is a promise the executor function of the promise this guy the executor function of the promise gets placed into the job queue so we have our things like sequentially executed function in the call stack we have browser apis callback in the callback queue and now we have promise executor functions in the job queue so let's focus on all these things together right you know just take yourself back a little bit and try to think about it okay we have three four things now how javascript is going to manage things whether it is going to give priority to call stack or it is going to give priority to callback queue or it is going to give priority to something else how how the things is going to happen now how things are going to happen is like basically there is a formula 
that formula that javascript engine knows and it executes so if we know the formula we will be able to anticipate very clearly like what is going to happen okay so this is the formula for each event loop what exactly event loop this this actually gets looped to see like if something is in there in the callback queue now it will also see whether something is there in the job job queue is my call stack is empty and what i need to bring back to call call stack that's what it does it doesn't do anything else right the moment things are in the call stack things gets executed right so for each loop in this event loop one macro task which means one task queue this call also called macro task one callback queue task right is completed out of the callback queue for each each iteration if the call stack is empty once this task is complete the event loop visits the job queue okay now once it visits the job queue it completes everything that is there in the job queue provided the call stack is empty now once this particular task is done right then it naturally again loop and again executes now what happened when there is a item in the both callback queue and both job queue if the items are there both in the callback queue and job queue it gives a preference of job queue over callback queue right so this is the this is the formula so let's go over it once again for each of the event loop it will check do i have an entry in the callback queue and an entry in the job queue yes i have and my call stack is empty let's pull one from job queue and pull over here let's complete now if this is done call stack is empty let's pull from the callback queue and put it over here if the call stack is not empty i'll keep executing things in the call stack again i'll loop when the call stack is empty to see whether the callback queue is having a job queue is having if both are having let's pull from job queue so this is how the uh, things happen and because of that in your programming if you have a promise and at the same time if you have a browser api like set time out or anything else the executor function of promises always gets higher priority do you want to see that let us see it with one example and that's going to be our last example for today all right so what we'll do we will be creating let's create again a simple function called f1 let's do console dot log of f1 so that we know like when is when f1 invoke so we know that f1 got invoked and then let's take another function i'll just copy this guy let's do f2 and change this to f2 let us again do a console sorry a function main like before and what we'll be doing here uh, let's put a console.log so that whenever the main start executed we know like there is a console.log got printed then like before we'll do a set timeout okay set timeout of f1 with a zero delay okay now let us introduce a promise okay so what we'll do new promise uh function resolve reject let's resolve this promise saying that um, say i am a promise i am a promise okay and once the promise resolve i told that we need to handle it with then now we can actually take this uh, in a variable and then call then or we can also call then directly over there this is kind of one other the same thing so resolve let's do arrow function and do a console dot log uh, resolve you can take any variable name here resolve reject reject it's up to you so resolve reject resolve you can do result also right so we have done that now the last thing what we'll do is like we'll call our f2 and finally once the f2 is done last will be invoking our main function all right so let's do uh, a walk through we have a f1 console.log f1 it does we have a f2 which is a console.log f2 then we have a main function we invoke main here but what main does is as a console.log of f1 it has a browser api set timeout which invokes f1 with zero delay 
Then we have a promise. It has an executed function this. And once the promise is resolved, we are handling this with the console.log. And then we call our F2, right? So we have sequential F1, you know, execution of function. We have a browser API. You also have a promise. We have all three that we have seen in the diagram. What's the output? What is going to be the output? Is it going to be main F1, I am a promise F2? Or main F2, I am a promise F1? Or anything else? What do you think is going to be the output? Let's give it a few seconds to think. Okay. Thought about it? Here is the output. Do you see the output? First, it does main, of course, because this is main. Then it set timeout goes to callback queue. The F1 goes to callback queue, right? We have seen. Promise goes to job queue, executor function. This goes to job queue. F2 gets executed automatically. F2 done, main done. Event loop sees the call, call stack is empty, but it has something in the callback queue. It has something in the job queue. Which one should take preference? Promises. Executor function should take promises. So this executor function gets into the call stack. I am a promise get resolved. Then call stack it empty again. F1 is still lying in the callback queue. Event loop finds call stack, call stack is empty. F1 is in the callback queue. Let's pull that into call stack, execute F1. So why? A main F2, I am a promise F1. Too much to take? Okay, let's see this again with the interac some interactions on the interactive diagram. I hope it will be clear. So first main that gets inside. Now main has a console.log main, gets executed. Set time mode comes in, is recognized as a web API, has a callback, push it into the callback queue. Then a promise, the executor function gets inside. Then F2 come into picture. F2 has a console.log F2. Executes, executes, done. This gets parity, come over here, print I am a promise, done. Then nothing is in the stack, event loop takes F1 and console.log of F1 and F1 is gone. This is the sequence. So let's see it once, once again, one last time. First main, main come inside. After main come inside console.log main, it sees a set timeout and has a callback function. So place the callback function into callback queue straight away, F1, great. Then a promise, place the executor function, the job queue, then F2. F2 has a console.log F2, done over there. Then comes out of F2, comes out of main. Among this, this gets priority goes inside anonymous function, it has you know, a console.log I am a promise, anonymous done, F1 gets inside, F1 has a console.f1 and it is going to get done and call stack is free, everything is free. So I hope that it is pretty clear now the how things work uh, in the synchronous and the asynchronous uh, JavaScript model. I hope that you really enjoyed uh, learning with me and uh, now, if you have, uh, you know, any program where you have to really uh, see like, you know, you have a bunch of code and then you have a set timeout and you have promises, I'm sure that you will be able to give answer just like that. Like what is the sequ sequence? What is the output? Now, to make your uh, this understanding a little bit better, what I have done is like I have, pre I have prepared a quiz and the link of that quiz is there, right there in the uh, video description. Go ahead and see that repo and try that quiz and feel free to send me the answer. I have also provided like how can you send me the answer. Uh, I'll be glad to kind of check the answer and, and kind of help you to learn it better. Right. Uh, if you like this video, if it is really, really helpful for you to cl clarify certain concepts, um, please like, share and comment in this video. Um, I am going to get started with the next one in a few days where we'll get started with promises and get kind of deeper into promises and understand. Until then, take a very good care of yourself and um, I'll see you with the other side. Thank you very much.